With President Biden digging in and vowing to stay on the ballot, many Democrats in close races are worrying about the impact on their race. Rep. Adam Schiff, who is running for a California Senate seat, summed it up this week when he spoke out on Meet the Press. Let's watch. Are Democrats in trouble with Joe Biden at the top of the ticket? Uh, look, there are concerns with the impact uh, on down ballot races if the president doesn't do well. Is he dragging uh, down down ballot races as we speak? Uh, you know, I, I, at present, our, our down ballot candidates in the Senate and House are doing well. They're all ahead. Uh, they are running well ahead of the president. But you can only run so far ahead of the president. Uh, and so the, obviously Joe Biden is going to need to consider uh, for his own sake and his own legacy, can he beat Donald Trump? He's the best to beat Donald Trump. But also uh, the, the profound impact this decision, maybe the most important of his presidency, will have on the House, on the Senate, on, on the future of the country. Some Democratic strategists are trying to attract funding from big donors who say they're no longer going to kick into Biden's war chest specifically. This is, of course, a complicated dance. Many political scientists say voters these days tend to vote for a party over individual candidates. Here to unpack all of this and delve into the races at risk is Democratic strategist Kevin Walling. Great to have you with us, Kevin. Robbie, Michael, good to see you. Yes, a nice little uh, yeah, Fox I, News reunion. How about it? On, uh, the, the we may channel have to give Kennedy Fox a little business. call. We look better with purple. <laughs> That's right. Uh, so t give us your lowdown on what's going on. I still say no way is Biden getting out, but am I becoming increasingly Pollyanna-ish about this? No, I think you're absolutely right. I mean, this we have to remember, this is a guy who got elected to the Senate at 30, has wanted to be president ever since then, has run any number of times for the presidency, finally has that. And in the history of this country, we haven't seen many incumbent presidents willingly give that up. Uh, and again, he's got his team around him. I don't know if they're having the honest conversations that we'd like them necessarily to have. Um, you know, in that Stephanopoulos interview, he talked about polls that he's seeing. I don't know if it's yeah, dug what in. Polls, what polls are those? Exactly right. Yeah. So, I mean, he, he makes reference to these polls all the time in terms of where he's up. Um, since the debate, uh, not a lot of the ground has shifted, actually. Um, but it's pretty clear in a lot of these battleground states uh, that it's a much yeah. more difficult path. By team around him, let's be clear on who we mean. We mean Jill Biden and Hunter Biden. <laughs> so let's get into the specific down ballot races. Um, it, it looks to me like, um, you know, counterintuitively, it has not been. We discussed this yeah. yesterday. The very left, very progressive people so far who have already had a combative relationship with Biden, you might have expected them to be turning on him. But the people raising the most um, concern right now are those more centrist Dems who are in losable races, swing, uh, swing district races. How are they feeling? Yeah, Robbie, it's a great point. I mean, the, the fact that you saw Congresswoman AOC out there with a, a pretty uh, supportive uh, uh, response to the president's standing uh, is interesting. Now you're seeing some folks like Michael Bennett, senator from Colorado, he's not up in cycle, but John Tester and Sherrod Brown, Ohio uh, and Montana certainly are, giving indications that they want to see the president actually perform better out there, make the case to the American people, uh, because I think there is some fear uh, in terms of uh, the down ballot aspect. Um, again, also polls, new poll out of Wisconsin, right? Shows the president losing uh, by five points, but Tammy Baldwin winning by uh, the same margin uh, yeah. by five points over her Republican challenger. So there is that dynamic, and we've seen that play out where the president's standing isn't necessarily tied to incumbent standing in terms of some of these key races, whether it be Arizona with Ruben Gallego, Tammy Baldwin, as I mentioned, Wisconsin, Chair Brown, Ohio, there is that disconnect where the president isn't so much a, of a drag that we've seen just yet on those down ballot races. Democrats have a chance to have the first black speaker in Hakeem Jeffries, but if the president stays on the ticket and brings the entire ticket down, basically, uh, that's gonna be an opportunity squandered. How much longer do you think the CBC sticks with uh, President Biden, given the opportunity they may, they may miss out on? Yeah, Michael, it's a really good point. You know, and, and that was one of the buoys to the president standing. He obviously had that call earlier in the, in the week with them. Both the CBC, the Congressional Hispanic Caucus, have come out strongly for the president. Um, but if there is that dynamic with Hakeem. There are some forecasts that show that the Democrats are uh, less positioned yeah. to take back the House. That's all we, we talked about for the last year is that yeah. Democrats are likely to take back the House, Republicans likely to take back the Senate, given some of the dynamics in some of these states. You're seeing, to your point, Michael, some of these frontliners also making waves, yeah. uh, a handful of them, Angie Craig in Minnesota, uh, some others that have Earl Blumenauer, for example, that are in tighter races, uh, distancing uh, themselves. There's indications that the former speaker is saying, you know, as, as we know, she's just win, baby. You know, yeah. if you got to come out 
uh, against me, as we remember in previous cycles. Just win, just baby, win, win. baby. Um, so she's given some uh, leeway, some breath to some of those folks to distance themselves from the president. She's also said, you know, we've got to finish up NATO today. The press conference has moved back to 630. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll see what happens tomorrow when folks are leaving town, if they kind of release a statement and get <laughs> hop on the plane back yeah. to their district. Yeah. I mean, she said, Nancy Pelosi yesterday, you know, asked about Biden over and over again. She keeps saying, what's his decision to make? It's his decision to make. I'm thinking, he made the decision. He already he made already the decision made two weeks made. ago. Yeah. So is that her way of saying, and, and there's a little bit of a, like a mob ask, I know you'll do the right thing. Like, is the right <laughs> thing for him to get out? Uh, Tim Kaine said that yesterday. Uh, our News Nation people mm -hmm. interviewed him, and he said, he, I know he'll do the right thing. I know he'll do the patriotic thing for this country. That sounds to me like some indirect pressure from uh, some prominent Dems, Nancy Pelosi, former Speaker of the House. Sure. Tim Kaine, we, we don't remember it, but was the <laughs> VP, VP, VP nominee for yeah. Hillary right. Clinton. Yeah. Um, is that going to have any bearing on on what he does? Well, we forget, you know, Nancy Pelosi. We think, you know, San Francisco, but she got her Baltimore she got baby. her Baltimore baby, right? So, <laughs> question about the mob. I don't I don't think there's as good as that. But coming from that kind of uh, a family in Baltimore, where it's all about vote counting, and we mm -hmm. know that's what her tenure as Speaker was all about. Um, you know. Both her and Leader Schumer are focused on their races, right? They they would like to have a Democratic president, but at the end of the day, they want a majority for both those caucuses. Uh, and I think they're again giving some breath to that. We saw indications that uh, Chuck Schumer on some calls with donors is leaving the door open mm -hmm. potentially for a replacement for the president. Now, Michael, we talked about this too. It's got to be you know likely the vice president. You know, you can't skip over the first black woman. Vice President uh, on the ticket uh, yeah. from a financial standpoint, too, just in terms of uh, how the party the operates with resources, mm -hmm. that they're on these joint victory committees with state parties. It's got to be her. Um, and again, she's out there campaigning as well. You know, she was in Nevada and Texas. Uh, I think she's in North Carolina today. So she's still kind of under the radar doing that base engagement work, but it's got to be her, if not the president. Let me ask you about donors real quick. You know, people calling for the president to get out may not work, but if donors cut off funds, is that really the thing that'll drive the president? Because without money, it's not just his race uh, that'll go down. He, the entire Democratic Party apparatus would go down. Yeah, it's a great, great point. And, and funny enough, we've seen a rise in grassroots donations to the party uh, since the debate, I think mm -hmm. 33 million or something like that, the best month that they've seen on record in June. But to your point, Michael, it's all about the bundlers, yeah. right? So that you've seen this rise Jeffrey in grassroots donors, and, people saying yeah. we, they, we got the back of the president, uh, that operation is already going full steam. But then it is a question of all these people that want to be ambassadors in the second exactly. term that are bundling hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars. Saw that letter from George Clooney, that Abed, uh, he's one of those bundlers. Um, if that's the case that you're starting to lose steam with the people that really power the, the mechanics of this party operation. Yeah, Ari Emanuel came that's out a couple days ago Yeah, said the same thing. Yeah, my, uh, I think I saw a reporting yesterday that uh, Katzenberg had begged Clooney not to do that op yeah. in the New York Times because that was going to be so devastating given Clooney's role as a <clears throat> fun fundraise hauler exactly right. for yeah. the Democrats. Yeah, it's, it, you know, we talk about his celebrity status and stuff yeah. like that, but, but George Clooney and his wife have been, them all have been huge uh, donors and backers to the president. Headlined in, in that op-ed that he talked about, that $30 million haul in L.A. just a few weeks ago for the president. So he's coming at it from that approach, not necessarily a celebrity approach. Obviously, he's got the name, so we all talk about it. Yeah. Um, but at this point, you also got to win the day every day, right? So the president, I talked about, had a good day with the CBC Hispanic Caucus on Monday, Tuesday, um, but struggled a bit yesterday with that op-ed, with uh, Speaker Pelosi's comments on Morning Joe, uh, with the, the uh, reports of Chuck Schumer behind the scenes. So again, he, all eyes are on this press conference Yes, he's gonna uh, have today another... at 6.30. If yeah. he can win the day today, stem a little bit of the bleeding heading into the weekend. Yeah, he's going to have that chance, like you said, tonight at uh, 6 to uh, improve morale among Democrats yes. and reassure people that he can get through the most basic confrontational, hostile question. The beatings will not stop until mor <laughs> morale improves. Even then, they might not stop. All right, stay tuned for more Rising right after this.